This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at the example all about unrealized profits. Uh, what have we got here with the question in terms of the requirement? Now you should be able to see that you have is it three separate parts to the requirement. Uh, first of all, it wants us to work out the value of inventory. Uh, within the CD group, so CD must be the parent, and it wants it there the 31st of December 20x5. Okay, so we add in cost 100% of P, 100% of S, and then adjusting for any prop adjustments. Uh, it also wants us to work out the receivables, so again, 100% of P, 100% of S, and adjusting for any intra company balances. And then it also wants us to work out non-controlling interest so the NCI remember NCI is usually done with our standard working for and the information in working for usually comes doesn't it or part of it the post acquisition profits come from working to okay your, your net assets working doesn't it uh, so let's go through and have a look let's understand the the group structure uh, so what you've got there is that CD Required 60% of PQ. Okay, so CD on 60 of PQ, the non controlling interest, only remaining is at 40%. Okay, uh, gives us the retained earnings at acquisition. Is it the 1.5 million? And it tells us how we go through there and value the non controlling interest. Uh, it's there based upon your proportionate share. So we'll end up with partial goodwill, won't we? Uh, it's important then that you identify that the, the two bits that are relevant to which parts of the question. Uh, that second paragraph tells us about is it an intracompany balance? Is that there one million? And then in the second or the third paragraph, uh, it talks there about some sales between PQ and CD. Uh, so PQ uh, sold goods to CD. So that's the sub selling the goods to the parent. Standard markup, 25%, and is it half of these have been sold? So there's half left in inventory, okay? And it goes on to say as well in the next bit, goodwill on acquisition has been impaired by half been moving since the acquisition date, okay? Uh, so excellent. So that's the, the main bits of information that we've got. Uh, we wanted to look at, was it inventory and receivable? So there's some inventory figures there, of five and one, 500. And then on the receivables, there's a figure of four five hundred and five five hundred, which we'll add across and consolidate. And then you've got the haven't you the the net assets, the equity of the subsidiary, uh, which will go into your net assets working, won't it? Okay, excellent. So let's go through. Uh, personally, if you were to to get something like this within the exam, or you were trying to spot the easier question. I think the receivables will, will probably be the easier one to deal with, wouldn't it? Because it's just 100% of the parent. So is that there is 4,500. The subsidiary is 5,500. And then was it a million worth of intracompany? Four, or five, nine, ten. Uh, less than one, does that go through there? And give you nine, nine thousand. Okay. Uh, so again, if you so wish, just to commit these things to memory, we've got one hundred percent of the parent, one hundred percent of the sub, and then you've got your intracompany balance adjustment. Uh, if you were going to go through and then put that into the answer, do just be careful. Uh, because it gives us a, a, an answer that wanted in, is it dollars? If you were to go through there and just put in 9,000, although you're correct, the computer will mark it wrong. And the reason being is that those figures that we've worked are thousands, so it's 9,000 thousands, so essentially 9 million, isn't it? Okay, uh, excellent. Uh, it then wants us to work out a figure, was it for inventory? So when you're looking at your inventory, it will be very similar, won't it, to how we've worked out your receivables. If 
you know, as what we do there is, remember, don't we, we take 100% of the parent, so is that 5,000, we add on 100% of the subsidiary, so it could be 1,500, and then we need to adjust, don't we, for your provision for unrealised profits. So again, we have, is it 100% of P, so we have 100% of X. adjustment to adjust for okay uh, let's go through and just work out the pup in a separate working uh, so we were told within the question weren't we uh, that there was one million worth of goods that were sold uh, there was a markup of 25 percent so to work out the profit it's 25 100 and 20 fifths and it said half had been sold so if half have been sold half are still in inventory aren't they okay uh tapping that onto your calculator i think that gives me is it 100 just quick check double check make sure i'm right yes it is yes excellent so i can then deduct the 100 from there and that goes through and does it give me six four hundred like before like we said uh, do just be careful because when you go through and put in the number don't just put in six four hundred remember we're working in thousands aren't we okay so six point four million so six four and then a series of five little zeros afterwards. Okay, excellent. Uh, so I thought those two were reasonably okay. I think you'd be quite happy if you were to get something like that within the exam. The last one, yeah, it's a challenge. So let's go through and have a look at it. Uh, that's going through and looking at the non-controlling interest, isn't it? So we look there at the non-controlling interest the date of acquisition to which we then go through and add the non-controlling interest share is it 40 percent of the post acquisition profit okay uh, so quite a bit to go through and consider so what we've got there remember uh, i do a standard working for s's net assets uh, so what you've got there, isn't it, is your equity or ordinary share capital. You've got your reserves. We look at it at year end. At acquisition. And post acquisition. Okay. Uh, year end, the share capital is there, is it, as 5,000. The reserves were there at seven thousand uh the share capital acquisition is five thousand and the reserves i think per the question were 1.5 million so one five hundred be careful that because we are looking aren't we at s's net assets and if you cast your minds back to the question there is also a pup adjustment as well isn't there okay that pup adjustment we make within the net assets working, don't we? Because it was S that sold the goods to the parent, wasn't it? Okay. Uh, PQ sold the goods and PQ is the sub. Uh, once you've got that, you're away. Uh, 7 and 5 is 12, isn't it? Less 100. Does that give me 11,900? six five hundred and does that give me just check five thousand four hundred post acquisition amazing five thousand four hundred post acquisition profit excellent uh so the non-controlling interest at acquisition is going to be forty percent of the net at at acquisition so forty percent of six five hundred uh, does that give me 2,600? I 
also want 40% of the post acquisition profits of 5,400. So that gives me 2,160. Uh, please be very, 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 very careful. Hopefully you pick that up. Uh, you do not deduct the impairment. Okay, you don't deduct the non-controlling interest share of the impairment. Now it did go through, didn't it? Within the question, if we go back to it just to show you where we're looking at. Uh, it says the goodwill on acquisition has been impaired by 0.5 million since the acquisition date. You would put that into your goodwill calculation. However, in this question, we ignore it. We don't give the non-controlling interest their 40% share. Why? Because it is the proportionate share of net assets. So the goodwill that we calculate is the parent share of the goodwill only. So any impairment goes entirely to the parent retained earnings and doesn't appear within the non-controlling interest. So the, that's my net assets working. Uh, any impairment does not need to be shown. Quite a clever little trick that, isn't it? Uh, and I think you have there, is it four? seven six zero okay that is your non-controlling interest so again just for completeness and to finish it all off there we go what's the figure for your non-controlling interest let me move it down so i can write it in properly you have there is it four seven six zero 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 excellent there we go uh, so any one of those three are likely to be exam standard questions. Uh, the inventory and the receivables, I thought were pretty straightforward, weren't they? Uh, the non-controlling interest was just a little bit trickier. So be on the lookout for that within the exam. Other than that, keep working hard and I'll see you later.